the Honorable the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, Honorable President and Honorable Deputy President, Cabinet Ministers, Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members of Parliament, Members uh, who are sitting in the gallery. 26 years after our democracy and the death of legal apartheid, a crime against humanity. Its legacy is most felt at the local sphere of governance. It has adverse impact on the livelihoods of vast majority of South Africans, particularly those who live in rural areas, especially homelands, bantustans, and townships, with a greater impact on women, children, and young people. No democracy, Mr. President, can survive or flourish if the majority of our people remain poor, unemployed, landless, and marginalized by the economic system, but seeing obscene opulence across them, but surrounded by conditions of squalor. Madam Speaker, we'd like to welcome the President's call that we must fix the fundamentals. This means that we must accelerate our efforts of creating a democratic government which is people-centered and focused on a better quality of life for all. Of course, we have to do this through the government uh, of the Republic of South Africa, which has three spheres, national, province, and local, distinctive, interdependent, and interrelated. And in the spirit of cooperative and intergovernmental relations, the Constitution also calls on all the spheres to cooperate with one another in mutual trust and good faith by, amongst others, making sure that there is friendly relations, assisting and supporting each other. And the Constitution further calls on the spheres of government and all organs of state within each sphere to not assume any power or function except those conferred on them in terms of the Constitution. But the Constitution also realized that the local sphere is the most important sphere because that's where people are, that's where everything happens, and that's closest to the people. It then says, the national and the provincial spheres must support and strengthen the capacity of the municipalities to manage their own affairs. And only in exceptional circumstances where the province may take over the responsibility. And if the province is unable to, the national. But through our system of integrated cooperative governance, which can be a catalyst for fundamental socioeconomic transformation, service delivery, and development. This can be achieved through the district development model that the president talked about to address the prevailing lack of coherence, coordination, and integration in government and in the implementation of policy. By using the district model as a lending strip, as MAMCAPA says, we are able to scale up interventions while sharing scarce resources and expertise amongst local municipalities. And through the district development model forums, we also bring in all the stakeholders, like youth, women, traditional leaders, business, NGOs, religious leaders, and so on. Using collaborative planning among the three spheres of government, we will have one district, one plan, and one budget for each of the 44 districts and eight metros. This will contribute to accelerating our economic growth through local economic development. It will also maximize impact on service delivery. And by implementing the one plan, one budget, greater accountability and transparency 
will prevail and corruption will be able to be dealt with at that level. Madam Speaker, piloting the district development model has taught us some lessons that will help us to refine our strategies. It is quite clear that it we do not deal with rural poverty and unemployment, the rural masses will swell the ranks of the urban poor. The pilots reveal the stark realities of intergenerational poverty, inequality, and high youth unemployment, which are influenced by low levels of skills and income. For instance, if we take OR Tambo, OR Tambo has 57% of the households are headed by women. And the national average is 37%. And according to the multidimensional poverty index, 19% of households in OR live in poverty compared to 7% average. 54% 50 of the youth are unemployed. There are also high levels of violence against women and children, with Lusigi Sigi recording the second highest reported rape cases. Last year alone, 295 sexual offenses were reported in the police station. Despite, we also learned that despite availability of land, the ocean as untapped possibilities, agriculture, tourism, and the ocean economy has not received the necessary support from national and provincial departments. Waterbeck is more or less the same, 41% of women, uh, head households are headed by women, 9% poverty, youth unemployment, 35%, and again, Waterbeck uh, shows the African paradox of a rich Africa, poor Africans, lots of resources, mining, but people are still poor there. Etewini, is partly rural and partly urban. And it shows the same thing, but with less uh, households being poor at 3.8%. But still, 42% are headed by women, even in Etegui. And we are not reaching the full potential of Eteguini because of the problems at the port and also uh, through because of crime and crime. And despite the investments that we are making in all these three districts, we can see that, we, we, we can also observe that the backlogs, especially at OR, whether they are water, housing, roads, are very high. So we hope that the one plan, one budget, will be directed towards addressing the challenges that we have identified and maximize on the opportunities. The three districts must, of course, ensure that agriculture, which has a, a, a big potential in the three districts, is um, accelerated. And in the two pilot sites, the ocean economy uh, is also very important. And with a diverse flora, fauna, and cultural heritage, tourism is very uh, important in these two. Among Stege ubona konke loku kwenzeka okwenzekayo kule indawo eyintathu sase sihlangana nomphathiswa waka rural development sathathi ingane ziyinkulungwane kula ma district amathathu sathi akashintshe le program ye NARISEC ayenze ukuthi ifithe lokho esidingayo ku district khona njengoba ngikhuluma nawe nje mongameli lezi ingane ziyinkulungwane manje zisetha abantu they are funda, this is a funda, is in terms of agriculture. This is a funda, no go ma para vets, no ba work on ma vets, ma kaya, ne zinto e zinjal. So as me, they say, I call less among me. Eh, eng funa futu ugu shoguti ge. Eh, gugu balegi loguti. Si pege lendi loguti. Lago maspala. Eh, in tanga no ze politiki zina yo na yo intelela. Tina, what we are going to do, 
because we have realized that also the lack of skills in these three districts, professional skills, contribute to poor performance. Beginning of the financial year, we're going to be sending skills to the three financial, water engineers, electric engineers, local uh, government development experts, planning experts, and other skills so that they, these skills can be shared. They'll be based in the district, but shared by the, municip the other municipalities. The issue of women, Mongameli, Iba Legera Kulu, Nyaga West 25, Sabuye, Beijing, Uhulmeni, Nawiaza, Magota, a private sector, Nogo, Kusa Holel, Wimalenga, Fani, Awekwa Makoska, Zigui leadership here in Kampani, so Stella Wuti, a private sector. Uh, what we also would like to say, President, is that the local uh, government white paper says planning must be over 25 years, not five years. So we would like to say by 2024, of the three districts, we must have 25-year plans, at least for the three pilots. And we must envisage a smart OR tambo, which is not entirely rural in 25 years, and many other things. A different Etegwini with high employment and zero hunger, a water bag where the young people there will be mining engineers and so on, and will be living in a totally different space. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, I want to say that this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. It will require endurance, hard work, and resilience. As President Tabon Peggy once said, those who will complete the course about the marathon will do so only because they do not, as fatigue sets in, convince themselves that the road ahead is still too long, the incline too steep, the loneliness impossible to bear, and the price itself of doubtful value. I thank you. Thank you, ma'am.